Hi, this is Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending August the 27th, 2021. Well, interesting week uh, with the Fed being in Jackson Hole and uh, uh, markets, uh, NASDAQ, big cap, large caps hitting uh, multiple new record highs as the week progressed. And, you know, we've been talking about over the past several weeks, small and mid caps being left out. They finally at the uh, at the at, at the beginning. Beginning, at the end of the beginning of the week, the, the, the mi middle of the week, around Tuesday, Wednesday, broke through uh, their short-term, their mid-term resistance levels and then converted those uh, resistance levels to support. So they went through them, came back testing them uh, for support and then trying to participate in the rally. So those were good signs. Those were good news. Uh, the bad news uh, uh, it, it abounds, and thus the, the label for this week's um, uh, segment of Toss Salad and Scrambled Eggs. Anybody that ever watched Frasier uh, remembers that theme song, and that's, that's what it reminded me of this week's when, when you have indicators literally pointing um, all, all, in all different directions. So your, your index is hitting on a large, uh, in, in a large caps hitting all-time record highs. Uh, S&P finding a bottom, NASDAQ finding a bottom uh, last week, rebounding and, and, and trying to make another bull run. And, uh, and then finally the mid caps, small caps finding their footing and, and trying to go up. Meanwhile, the 10-year treasuries and everything yields start declining again. So the money is all coming in here and it's going in all different directions because the fear abounds. Now volatility admittedly is running lower. but. Um, that's where we are kind of kind of awaiting the Fed statement from Jackson Hole. Uh, they've removed one talking about phrase and so they're they're talking about the oncoming tapering. Here's something that Chairman Powell never considered. They considered the reopening as many of us did to be a one-off event and not stretching out because of the lack of vaccinations. And so now we're getting this uh, we're getting this lengthening reopening of the economy running now all the way into the beginning of 2022 because of the pandemic among the unvaccinated, and because of the uh, because due to that the 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 continuing um, evolution of the variants because we can't get enough of the people vaccinated. The COVID is becoming endemic, and now what we're seeing is the push. Now that we've got FDA approval, that was a big thing in, in terms of reopening, but FDA approval of the Pfizer vaccine, so that's the gold standard for vaccinations. But now, because this thing continues to drag out, now the vaccinated population uh, has to get boosters at eight months, and there's some uh, yeah, yeah about that, but let me tell you about a story uh, reports out of Israel right now, 60% of the population in Israel, 60, age 60 and above, have now received the third uh, third booster, third dose of uh, the vaccination. And what that's doing, uh, we got to get past the point of, of, of measuring efficacy as just don't get the virus. Everybody's had a cold. We've lived with colds our entire lives. I mean, that's what we're trying to reduce the COVID to by the use of the vaccines. And so it's not a matter of did he get it? Did he test positive? Did she? It's, it's a question of did she have to go to the hospital? Did she have to have a ventilator? Was she intubated in order to survive? So the idea is to remove the serious illness, get that down into a manageable thing where everybody has a has the flu for a couple of days and gets on with life. That's what we're trying to do, okay? So that's where we've got to start getting our mindset, in my view, and, and maybe the economy will straighten out. Meanwhile, because I say this, because the, the Fed was talking about grabbing inflation sooner this year, but if you continue to have these shutdowns and these supply chain disruptions, very difficult for them to be more aggressive against inflation. Why do I bring the supply chain up? Because we've got now record number of ships stuck off the port of LA, off of Long Beach, California. 40 ships, they're about stuck out in the uh, Pacific waiting to try to get in and get unloaded. Uh, Chinese ports are shutting down because the virus is spreading in China. And so we're getting to the point now to where you're expecting on-time deliveries 
to be about 40% of the time. Otherwise, you're going to have severe delays. So this is disrupting things as we move into the end of Q3 and, 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 and run out the year into Q4. We thought we were at the end of the thing, but no, we're just going to keep dragging it out and that's causing problems all the way around. So uh, word to the wise, um, don't don't let your uh, your lead times uh, if if you need things don't let your lead times uh, become victim to these very real likelihood of of, of delays uh, in, in shipments. Okay, all right. So what does that mean? That means that inflation now uh, is becoming less transient as we move along. So that becomes an issue becomes an issue for our group uh, and, and retired people very much so because we're already looking at cost of living adjustments. Prices have already jumped up in many areas 6%. We're looking at cost of living adjustments in Social Security of the same 6%, so it's okay, it's a wash, right? Not so fast because Medicare Part B premiums are also jumping up uh, the same 6%. Eventually, without other legislative changes the entire the entire system increases to the point where uh, your social security uh, starts entering that taxation level at lower uh, amounts it, it, it's cutting in not that you're making more money necessarily but just due to inflation you're already bumping into those twenty five thousand thirty two thousand dollars per year uh, thresholds where then you know up to 50% or 85% of your social security benefits could become taxed not a good thing when everything else is increasing in price too so uh, the hits just keep coming um, and so we're keeping our eye on these things at some point as we move into September now that we're closing out August and we move into September this is going to translate, it's not right now, we're, we're, we're looking at the good side and we're participating a little bit in the upside movements of equities, but you look at that fear index measured not, in my view, by volatility, but by the yields on the 10-year, and, and, and those yields do not keep coming up, okay? Uh, and, so, and so I'm looking at that as a continuation of the fear trade. At some point, we're going to roll back over. Yeah, it, 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 celebrate the highs, participate to the extent possible, enjoy a little bit of the bull run, but uh, don't be surprised as we move into September, the end of the fiscal year, and beginning at Q4, another rollover. We're on top of it. We stay ready. We're doing, we're excited about announcing our, our, our next new community college classes. We're going to be uh, uh, CDC compliant on everything and personal protective equipment and everything. But you guys come out. We're going to be doing this the last week of September at Lanier Tech. And then as we move into October, we're going to offer another class uh, over at Chattahoochee Tech at the Woodstock campus. And so you guys can find that information on our on our website, assetguidancegroup.com. Just go in there, check out that website, and, and get a link to that uh, information. We'll be updating that and sending that out. Look forward to seeing everybody in there as we teach all of these concepts uh, in a community college uh, adult continuing financial education type setting. And, and we're really excited about getting back into that groove and protect you. Meanwhile, don't hesitate to reach out if we can help you, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.